Welcome to another MariaDB FOSTEM talk. In this case, I want to talk about how to migrate from other databases to MariaDB. So here is an overall overview of what I'm going to talk about, both uh, from NCSQL databases and MySQL and Oracle and others. So why to migrate to MariaDB? Um, we see a lot of people do migration from commercial closed source databases nowadays just because the saving in cost is so huge. And MariaDB is basically everywhere, it's in all distributions, fully supported, and uh, it's one of the few open source databases who have uh, one company supporting all versions of MariaDB. And uh, we, we work a lot with different uh, uh, vendors to ensure that MariaDB works on all possible hardware, which means that uh, you and uh, your de developers can use MariaDB on any system that you happen to have in-house or plan to use. Your, this kind of saves uh, things for the future. But there are a couple of things that I like about the MariaDB design and um, the fact that we do our utmost to ensure that your data is easily manageable and uh, also over time. In other words, we don't, words, we don't change storage format, at, at least not for some storage engine like MySAM area or our archive. We kind of guarantee that if you have an old table, 100 years ago, looking in it from the future, you should be able to install them uh, in MariaDB and just be able to still access it. And also, I strongly believe in that upgrades should be trivial. So you should have your code be able to use all formats and in the few cases where that is impossible, then there should be an easy process that this is part of MariaDB upgrade that uh, automatically we change your data to the new one. But in most cases, we are able to run things unchanged. So when we talk about migrate, migrating an application from one database to MariaDB, uh, I usually work with customers and try to help them to be able to do that in a way that they don't have to do, or the goal is there should be no changes in your applications or your SQL queries. Uh, of course, you have to change them uh, to use a MySQL or MariaDB connector, but uh, apart from that, things should just work. Of course, that, that's a hard goal, but uh, when you have that as a goal and you try to get as closely to that for every migration that you do. The, the, the procedures and produce gets better and we are getting there for many customers. So let's start with ANSIC compliant databases. So MariaDB has a large subset of ANSI SQL but also with lots of extensions like all other databases. So long as your application is just using ANSI SQL queries, it's quite easy to move to MariaDB. And uh, so the process is uh, to, to move, is to first do a quick analyze, will things work? You basically set up another server and copy it, or you use SQL lines, which is an excellent tool to see uh, that, uh, to feed your log of queries and then get output that this is what MariaDB supports or doesn't support. Then you dump your uh, database in SQL statements or you you use some of the many tools that you can just copy data between databases and then you run them into MariaDB. And then you should always test your application for correctness and performance to see that you are happy with it. And then you have to you adjust privileges to ensure that nobody can access your data, we shouldn't. When it comes to migration from MySQL, things are often quite easy. 
for up to MySQL 5.7, MariaDB is in practice a drop-in replacement to MySQL. You just have to deinstall MySQL, install MariaDB, run MariaDB upgrade, and you're up and running. Of course, you should test things and see things that things work, but uh, there are millions of users who have done that as uh, uh, operating systems has switched by SQL to MariaDB, and we haven't seen any big concerns of things work, of that this doesn't work. With MySQL, it's here things are a little bit different because MySQL, it's here has changed how databases and, uh, and tables are stored. So we can just use uh, them um, MySQL storage layout. So with MySQL 8.0, you have to do a dump, and then you do a, a dump to SQL statements, and you install those in MariaDB, and then you have to adjust the privilege tables. A little like that you do with when migrating from an ANSI SQL. But uh, because the syntax is 99% uh, equal, things should just work. There's a very few cases where the syntax is different, mostly in some replication commands and uh, in the JSON syntax. With, with MySQL 5, uh, MySQL, uh, with MariaDB 10.5 and above, we can also work with uh, uh, the JSON uh, storage that MySQL is using. So it they automatic converted to MariaDB or MariaDB upgrade. So those usually work, but the syntax for some things are different. When migrating from Oracle, things are not that easy because Oracle has their own uh, SQL uh, syntax that is uh, quite different from ANSI. And um, to, to be able to make that possible, we added the SQL mode Oracle, where MariaDB can, in addition to MariaDB syntax, also work with Oracle syntax for a quite large subset of Oracle syntax. And we were, uh, I was creating this together with DBS Bank, who wanted to move uh, a big part of their applications from Oracle to MariaDB because they wanted to use an open source database. And uh, in the end, we managed so that they were able to run all applications unchanged when it comes to the uh, SQL queries. So all Oracle store procedures and uh, statements works unchanged in MariaDB. And that was already added in MariaDB 10.3. And now we are working with other companies to do the same. So, thanks to us having a big subset of Oracle functionality already testing with DBS, in many cases, your application, Oracle application, may work as, as is with MariaDB. But there may be some small changes that you have, have to do. And that's why we're working with other companies to ensure that what the extended SQL syntax that they are using at MariaDB also should work in the, in the future. So we have immigration service in MariaDB Corporation that I'm a part of, and uh, our job is to enhance MariaDB to ensure that uh, when we have ported the first applications for a customer, the next ones will be easier, because usually within a, within a company, you are using this, uh, the same subset of features almost everywhere. So what was the features we added to Oracle? We worked mostly on those cases where Oracle is quite a lot different than ANSI because that's where the problems were. So we, 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 there, there's new extended syntax to support Oracle in store procedures, cursors, loop, variable handling, exceptions, function names, and so on. But one of the strange things with Oracle, is, which everybody who has worked with Oracle knows about, is that uh, uh, null is the same as empty string. So if you have an empty string and you do is ask is null for it, it will say null and vice versa. And that is quite hard 
to handle with syntax because it's not only syntax is affects all the deeper parts of of the server and how things are stored so, <clears throat> so that one we haven't been able to emulate perfectly but we did add SQL empty string is null when this mode is added and of course you should can run that with two modes at the, at the same uh, same times so the in, in this case uh, for is null will be for an empty, for empty string will be regarded as a null and uh, we did also some other changes to make most of the cases work not everything but most enough for keeping a dbs and some other customers happy also we, we didn't work with just new syntax we also added new functionality like se sequences that was added in 10.3 we also added packages and other things that are extensions to the syntax and uh, anything that was not conflicting with ANSI SQL you can also run with from normal oracle mode uh, or normal ANSI mode in MariaDB but of course anything that is conflicting only works in oracle mode and um, in 10.6 we have or I have worked with Vokutech to add some new functionality one of the things that a lot of Oracle applications seems to use is Ronam, which kind of a limit-like um, feature in MariaDB, but it works quite differently because Ronam works with the number of accepted rows, accepted rows in those uh, that satisfies the WHERE clause, but in spite of the order, while Maria do limit, we do limit on the end result. So things are quite different. But um, in 10.6, we will have something that is extremely close to what Oracle has. And um, Vokutech also gave uh, patches for implementing sys guide and minus as an alias for accept. And there is some ongoing work for, for the sample clause that we can use to just to get a sample of the rows from a query and also a row ID. By the way, did you know that MariaDB has kind of a row ID variable? Uh, so if you have a query and you use, put row my underscore row ID anywhere in the query, like row ID equal five, that will be mapped to the primary key of that table. If you have, have one and it's only one column. And for some people, that has been a lot of help when migrating from Oracle, especially. So most of the effort we are done from other databases when it comes to extending uh, MariaDB is for Oracle. We also added something to SQL Server from, from Microsoft. It's kind of a strange database because it's largely ANSI. It comes from Sybase, who has tried to be ANSI. But it's also some difference, small differences that actually causes a lot of problems. And um, to just have a start of uh, migration from SQL Server, uh, we created this mode MS SQL and uh, added that, which I think is the biggest difference in SQL Server and MariaDB is that uh, when you quote, you shouldn't, you have to use uh, brackets like you can see in the example and that we already added in 10.23 so to get a migration process ongoing if you have a lot of databases uh, the best way to do is working with MariaDB Corporation or with some other vendors and, and ensuring that MariaDB is extended to understand the new functionality that you're using. If you do this for every application, then you're getting closer and closer to the goal that uh, uh, each migration will be easier than the previous one. And uh, also you get, the, you get a better server that uh, uh, 
will help others and you in the future. And hopefully that after most of the syntax that you're using is implemented, the rest of your applications can be moved and changed. And uh, we are happy to work uh, with you to get patches uh, uh, with we in this case, both Maria Ruby Corporation, Maria Ruby Foundation, getting your patches, review those when it comes to more migration functionality and add those into MariaDB. And what we do for uh, companies who work with us is that we can, during the migration process, we can give you uh, binaries that you can test immediately when the functionality is added. So we basically have a, a way to work continuously during a release uh, development cycle, ensuring that all your needs is satisfied in the next one, but you already have binaries that you can start using for those applications who are no supported by MariaDB. So if you have any questions, I'm available on uh, Sulib both during the talk and after the talk. So see you there.